Hello everyone. Welcome to the guided project on drought monitoring. In this series of videos, I'll be helping you implement this project in a step-by-step -step way. We'll start with a blank code editor and I'll guide you through the entire process of building the complete script. And I hope you can code with me today. We'll start with a brief introduction of the problem statement about the data set and the methodology, and then we'll dive right into coding. So let's get started. So the title of the project is Calculating Rainfall Deviation for Drought Monitoring. I really like this project because it allows you to practice the basic and intermediate skills that you learned, such as filter, map, and reduce. And the skills you learn are widely applicable to many different domains. The problem is essentially how to track drought, how to monitor areas and determine if there is a drought or not. So we'll take uh, satellite-based rainfall data and determine if the rainfall in the current period and compare it with the uh, long-term average of 30 years and see what is the deviation. And this deviation is a strong indicator of a drought. So if you take any region and compute what has been the rainfall for the same time period that we're measuring for the past 30 years, and if the current period is experiencing say anomalies where it is much lesser than the 30 year average, that means it is likely that area is gonna experience drought very soon. And that's a great an early indicator of drought. So the problem statement is that given a state and its district, let's calculate for each district, what is the deviation from the current period versus a 30 year average and determine which districts are likely to be experiencing drought. And this is a very important application uh, for monitoring drought. And the techniques that we're gonna use are applicable to a wide range of monitoring uh, situations. The data set that we'll be using is called CHIRPS. Uh, CHIRPS stands for Climate Hazards Group Infrared Precipitation with Station Data. That's a mouthful, right? But let's break it down. Uh, so Climate Hazards Group, this is a university group, a research group that produces this data set. It uses infrared precipitation. So there's a satellite-based data where it uses infrared radiation to measure what might be the precipitation in that region. So it's measuring the amount of light that is reflected in the infrared band. And it uses that to determine amount of rain for that. And the previous version of this data set was just known as CHIRP. That is, you estimate the rainfall based on the satellite data. But uh, the satellite data is not very accurate. The most accurate rainfall data is measured on the ground. So this version of this data set combines the rainfall data along with the ground station data and gives you an estimate that of what is the interpolated rainfall, rainfall data based on the station values as well as the satellite data. So it's the best of the both worlds. Uh, this diagram shows the coverage. So it covers most of the globe up to a certain latitude range. So if you are anywhere in the world and you want to monitor rainfall, this is a great data set for this region. So this is, as I mentioned, this is a group that works out of University of California, Santa Barbara. Uh, one good thing about this data set is it's a long consistent time series. So this data is available from 1981 to present. That means you can monitor the rainfall data over a long period of time. And that's what we need for this application, right? We need this long period average so we can compute what is the deviation from the current rainfall. It's a fairly high resolution. So six kilometer per pixel, that is much higher resolution than other climate data sets that you have. So again, because you have, can combine the station data, worldwide station data, you are able to generate this data set at a fairly high resolution. And uh, again, we uh, said this is primarily application of this is drought monitoring. And because you are now able to compare the current data with a consistent time series. It is also used for determining say climate change. Is the climate change affecting the amount of rainfall? And at the end of the slides, I have linked to a nice paper which uh, uh, shows the application of this data to determine whether in certain rainfall, the rainfall has been trending down or up and what's the uh, predicted rainfall value look like based on this data set. Uh, this data set comes in a slightly different format where the primary unit of measurement for this data set is something called a pentad. A pentad is a grouping of five days. So let's understand more about this pentad. So uh, 
you can imagine a lot of data. You might be familiar with a lot of data which can be measured daily. That is easier to understand. There might be some data that comes as a monthly data, but here this data set comes as a five-day data. Uh, so each image in the data set is represents five days of rainfall. And this is based because the methodology that it generates, it relies on a lot of other data sets which are generated in five day uh, series. So then it, the, this data is also derived from uh, that data set and comes as a grouping of five days. So you can take uh, any month data and you can say the month starts with one, goes to five and that's one pentard. And again, there can be up to six pentards in a month. Uh, there are, every month has 25 days, remaining days are the sixth pentard. So if it's a, a February with 28 days, the last pentard will have only three days of worth of data. And then the pentard resets at the next month. So you know, regardless of the month or the year, always say January 1st, a new pentard will start. February 1st, a new pentard will start. And so you can understand the structure of the data where beginning of the month is the start of the uh, pentard series. And you can have up to six pentards in a particular month. Um, and you know you can, each image represents this one pen card. So uh, the primary computing step for chirps is pen card. So you should always use the pen card data. There are some applications which require daily data. And what the chirps dataset team does is that they disaggregate this data, where it says, I know what was the rainfall in five days. I can distribute it among the different days and give you a daily data set. And they use another source to determine what might be the distribution over the five days. And I found that that, that daily data is sometimes not very accurate, doesn't match with the, the ground stations exactly. So unless you really need the daily data, chirps should always be used as a pentad data set because that's a native uh, temporal resolution of this data set. Uh, Again, the chirps is not available in a real time basis. It's available uh, about three weeks of latency. And the reason for that is uh, because it combines the satellite measurements, which can be avail made available pretty soon, but it has to wait for all the station data to be recorded, finalized, and then sent across for it to be finalized. So there's about three week delay, which is still okay for our application of drought monitoring. Once you build the script, you are able to run the script and you'll see what was the situation like three weeks back and you will get an early indicator of the drought. So how does this uh, data set structure? The data set comes with a band, just a single band data and the band name is precipitation and the value is millimeter per pentad. Remember, so in rainfall data, one of the key things you need to remember is that rainfall data, when you are trying to group it or average it for a month, you don't really average it, you always sum it. So if you think about other data sets, such as say Landsat or Sentinel, when you're computing some index like NDVI, you are always taking a mean or a median value and you are kind of averaging it over time. But for rainfall data, uh, average over five days is not really relevant. You always say, give me all the images for a month, sum it, and then you'll get the total rainfall for a month. Right? So that is in rainfall data, always remember, this is a mistake I've seen many people make where you are working with a whole bunch of data sets and you are doing median, 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 and then you do median for rainfall data as well, which is not right. Rainfall data is always summed for the period you're looking for. And then over the different periods, you can take a mean of that. We'll come to that uh, a little later in the video. So let's go through the process. What is the process of calculating this long-term mean? And we need to go through this process where the rainfall mean is generally calculated at a month level. You generally don't see anybody saying, oh, the pentard mean for this January was this, right? You generally have people say, the average rainfall in January for this city was this. And this is how all the measurements, all the, the methods are developed. So the main thing that we're gonna do is to aggregate this five day data into a monthly series. And this is the skill that is widely applicable. Many data sets that you will work with, they either come as a daily data, some come as a 16 day composite, some come as eight day composite, and you'll often need to group them for a monthly data set. Maybe you want to do a seasonal composite, maybe you want to do a yearly composite. So the skills that we learn here to aggregate this data over a period of time, that is really useful. So let's see how we'll do. Uh, we want to, the first step you want to do is to compute the average monthly rainfall for the past 30 years. So how do we do that? So 
uh, CHIRPS has over 40 years of data. So whichever year we are starting our calculation from, we take that year, we take that year and as you remember, each month has up to six pentards. So this each box is representing a pentard. So if you look at all the images for January for this year, and you'll say, well, I have six images and it's all global images and you inquire a pixel value and say, oh, this is uh, 20. And that means 20 millimeter per pentard, right? So the first step that we wanna do is to take this data and for all of the years and we'll want to compute the monthly total rainfall. So what we're gonna do, we'll just take all of this data and say, what is the monthly total rainfall for each year? So then we'll take each month for each year and then we'll calculate the sum of that particular month. And then we end up with an image collection like this where for each year you will have 12 images and those are the monthly totals. And now we have this monthly totals. We can now say we have 30 years of data where each month we have totals for each month. Now we can take an average of all the months and then we'll end up with a monthly average of all the years. And then this is the collection where we'll have 10, 12 images where each image represents for each pixel what was the to average total rainfall for a month, right? Once more, we have calculated the monthly totals for each year and then we'll take average across each month and then we'll end up with this uh, collection of images where it represents what was the average rainfall for each pixel for January, February, March, and so on, right? Once we have that, we can calculate the deviation. So we take, this is the historic data for last 30 years. We each image represents the total average rainfall for each month. Then we can take the data for the current year and we can say, do the same process where we'll take the current data, compute the monthly sums of each of this data. And once we have the monthly totals for the current year, we can compare it month to month for each of the year. And uh, the nomenclature is the RFN, which is the normal rainfall, which is the monthly average. The current year rainfall is RFI. And then we can compute the deviation for each month where we just take image of Jan current January, compare it the monthly average image of the January, and then compute the deviation, just which is just the divide, uh, take the current data divided by the average, uh, subtract the average and divide by the average and multiply by the hundred. So you'll get the percentage deviation. And if the deviation is, you know, in negative, that means the current year is experiencing a rainfall deficit. And if it is a large deficit, that is an indicator of the drought. So there are some resources. Uh, if you're interested about this data set, do read uh, more about this CHIRPS research data set. It explains how the data set is computed. It's a fairly robust data set and is widely used. This data set, if you're using it, it's particularly useful where you are comparing the data from year to year. If you just want to measure what was the total rainfall at a particular time, uh, this data may not be very accurate. But for if you're doing this comparison of year versus the average, or you want to have a trend of the rainfall, this is a really good scientifically accurate data set. So you should definitely uh, try to use that if you have a requirement like that. There is a manual for drought management, which kind of lays out, if you want to do drought management, there are a bunch of things you need to do. And this rainfall deviation calculation is a big part of it, but there are other things you need to do. So this is a really nice manual that you can uh, read through and see uh, if you want to implement some of that. And this is the paper that I mentioned, which uh, takes the CHIRPS data and determines the long-term trend of rainfall in a particular region. And this also is implemented in Google Earth Engine. It comes with the code as well. So if you want to do something similar, you want to do a statistical uh, analysis of whether the rainfall is increasing, decreasing, etc. you can uh, refer to this paper. All right, so we have done with the introduction. The next step is to start coding. So let's get to that.